Hey guys, it's Bing Day. I've been putting these suckers off for a while. I don't know why. I'm nervous about doing them because I've never actually tackled a carb before, but I've watched a hell of a lot of YouTube on it um, and asked a few questions of guys that have done them before, Custom Moto, um, Corner Custom, Trev, Distang, um, got quite a few tips. So I'm gonna have a crack. So what I'm thinking, my vision is, I'll take you through the video, I'm gonna strip them down. Um, I'll give them a good clean off in the ultrasonic cleaner. Then I'm thinking I'll reassemble all the main parts with all the seals and everything, block up all the other orifices and give them a sandblast. And from there, I'm going to be hitting these with uh, titanium E-Series Cerakote. Um, I'm going to leave this black and I think at this stage I might do the brackets and where the cable little brackets are and all that. I'm going to do that in armour black so it'll be nice and sort of shimmer silver with the black little highlights on the springs and the, um, the brackets here. So, I'll, um, this is my first time doing it. I'll take you through a bit of a time warp and pulling it down. Um, you'll be seeing it as I see it. And then, yeah, we'll get them blasted and get them cerakoted and back together and see what we come up with. They don't look too bad a condition. Pretty mucky and pretty filthy, but I think um, the silver will definitely look nice against the black here um there's so much black on this bike now so i think a little bit of silver in there will look quite nice so let's get to it Now the next part is the actual butterfly. These screws at the bottom here are also nailed. So if you try and just undo this from what I've read, um, you'll strip the thread. Also, Paul from Custom Moto reminded me of that one. So it's just a matter of filing the ends down until you get rid of that nail. I always mark things just to make sure they go in the same way. That's a lesson learnt. Not in a good way, but I've learnt my lesson. So when these go back in, um, I've been told because the knurling now is gone, just add a little bit of blue Loctite. And this comes straight out. That's it. So she's all stripped down. And I'll um, throw these all in the ultrasonic cleaner now. Just the, um, the tops. I'll give them a bit of a scrub first. So I don't clog up the ultrasonic too much. And then um, I'll come back to you. Needless to say, I will be putting uh, rebuild kit that I got from uh, EME so all new gaskets, rings, rubbers the new diaphragm even though these do look pretty good but I've got it there so I might as well do it alright we shall see what I can fit Alright, 
out of the ultrasonic cleaner looking a lot nicer I did have to give them a bit of a scrub with petrol um, my go-to degreaser toothbrush and petrol so virtually from here I'm thinking I'll reassemble just the uh, lids and so forth back on um, put the shafts back in any covers that I can get on I'll put on just to try and close it up a little bit I know people blast them fully um, open and just as long as you give it a good air blast out make sure you got no media um, apparently it's pretty fine but I'm just gonna do this anyway because it'll probably make it easier as well to blast all the um, the screws and everything if they're actually in there so I'll put this back together as much as I can and block up any little holes orifices that I know of um, like next to the Bing badge here you've got this little sucker here that actually goes through to inside here so I might just get a toothpick and shove into that one and there's one on the other side as well which is just in here behind uh, your fuel inlet there um, same deal there for the actual fuel inlet I've got these little rubber caps I will probably hopefully that'll fit yeah that fits on so I can close that up um, I'll put all the, the gaskets back in for these hopefully that'll stop a lot of the media um, yeah so I'll get this closed back up the o-rings the old o-rings I don't really care about obviously because I'm replacing everything and same with the gaskets so if they get a little bit chewed or get some stuff in them it's not really gonna matter so I'll get this closed back up and taped up um, and then we'll get it in the blast cabinet the blasted bings looking a hell of a lot better already um, both of them are nice and uh, keyed up ready for the Cerakote so from here I'll disassemble everything again I'm going to give it a really good blowout and um, make sure all the uh, inlets and everything are all clear see if anything got in but I'll, I'll give that a really good clean out and then i'll uh, mask everything back up put all my toothpicks so forth back in ready for the actual syrup all right it's spray day so i've got the the carbs doing their uh acetone soak um and i've got all the hardware screws and so forth choke cover doing its separate soak um, so I'll get all these ready and get them hung I won't bore you with the details of that uh, and then I might do a little one just on the spray but for those who didn't see it on Insta I had a little bit of a, a light bulb moment and I'm hoping this is gonna work um it's to do with all these little screws I, I hate spraying these little screws and having to tie them up in the the wire here it's a total pain in the butt so i was thinking the other night what could i do to make it easier and it came across me to use a magnet so i've been down to my local hardware store for 16 dollars. i got a, a tool magnet this is made to go on the wall and obviously all your tools sit on that it did have paper on the front which i've taken off just so it's it's good for the oven it's got a nice metal back to it nice and solid this is 600 my oven's 900 so this will fit straight down on the tray of the oven and it's as simple as popping your screws straight on it so they stand nice and upright 
And I think it's going to make it so much easier to spray these little suckers. You can see there's no way this is going to move. These magnets hold up to 18 kilos. These are tiny little screws. So I'm going to give this a bash today. Um, I googled, I said in the Insta thing, I don't know why I haven't seen this before, why people haven't done it. When I actually googled it, it did say that magnets don't like heat and they lose their magnetism. Um, these are ferrite magnets. I was going to get rare earth, which I'm glad I didn't do because apparently rare earth at 100 degrees start losing their magnetism. Um, I'll end up with screws all over the uh, bottom of the oven. But I think being ferrite, it says it can handle 150 degrees, no problem. Because of the bings and the plastic on the bings on the other side, the plastic cap, I'm going to bake at 75 for two hours instead of 150 for one hour. Um, it's a nice little tip I got off Paul Phil from Custom Moto. Thank you very much for that. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to bake. I'm going to spray the screws and the brackets in armor black and I'll bake, start them on their bake for the, um, the two hours. Um, and then as soon as I finish that, I'm going to hit the bings in the titanium e-series and do the same so i think we should be right at 75 degrees it's only half of what the ferrite magnets can handle um so i'm hoping we should be right so with this sucker here she's just going to hang and sit there nicely um i reckon it's going to make it so much easier to get around these little buggers and a lot easier to transport them so i'll get the rest of these brackets all hanging and then i might do a quick one on the spray and then we'll get the um, carbs done. All right, I'll be a bit muffled because I've still got the mask on, but as you can see, the black's down. All the uh, components come out pretty nice by the look of them. About to get these suckers into the oven. The screw rack worked a treat. I'm just hoping it holds up once I get it into the oven. So I'll send these in for bake. Um, guns are all cleaned out ready to go and then we shall get on to the titanium let me start by saying the guys that do this flat out hats off because that was the biggest pain in the butt masking these things up um i've got them all uh masked with the captain tape and got the little rubber Silicon plugs in there, um, toothpicks I'm using in the smaller holes to make sure nothing gets in. But that was over an hour just to mask these little buggers up. So guys that do it, absolutely well done. I don't know how you do it. That was driving me nuts. But we're ready. Um, got the gun dialed back in. This is the, the baby I'm using, Titanium SIG E250. It's the first time I've actually used E-Series. Um, the rest of the stuff is actually pretty much baked now, so I'll get them out of the oven and then I can um, get these babies in. Let's see how it looks. All right, excuse the mess, it's been a big day. Um, we're about half an hour away from the bake finish for the... Um, titanium so i thought it'd be a good chance to quickly get all my o-rings on um in the pack i got from eme we've got all the e-rings for your shafts all your jets everything the new gaskets new diaphragms so i'll get all that prepped um so obviously you tape up all your threads so you don't do any damage um, my first time doing this, so I might be referring back to photos. All the old YouTube, I've cut all the old ones off with an X-Acto knife. They're quite, um, quite squashed and brittle actually, so it's probably a good thing that I've had a crack at this. Um, so yeah, let's get them on. Of course... I've got some silicon lubricant here that I've pumped out onto the plastic bag here just to make it a bit easier for these to get over. So we have the main jet holder. So 
So this sucker here, I was a bit paranoid about how I know this, the way that this goes, but it's quite simple. There's a little keyway in here. You've got the same on the back of this. So you drop that in, make sure she sits in the keyway there. And then your pleat on top. And from my research on the video, apparently you give these a little bit of anti seize. All right, guys, here we have it titanium E series. I've brought it outside while we've got a little bit of sun just to see if you can see the nice metallic to these. They come out bloody beautiful, I'm pretty stoked about it. I've still got to have to polish up that plastic bit. I'll get a bit of uh, plastic, probably headlight uh, restorer onto that to get it nice and shiny and then I'll highlight the Bing itself. So I'm going to take this sucker in now and assemble this one and then I won't bore you with the other side. I think you get the main idea and it'll keep the old video down somewhere respectable. All right, so in the end, I thought it was actually probably wiser to put the first one back together. Since as though this, as I've said before, is my first time, I'm sure to bore you with mistakes and everything. So she's all back together, manual choke is in. I love it, it looks bloody killer. So now I've sort of know the way around it. I'll go through the second much to the disgust of my dog who just wants to play ball alrighty so I started with the choke so the choke um, I'll put a bit of lube around this o-ring uh, you see a little dot at the top so that goes in and lines up with the front of this they have uh, right and left marked on them. So yeah, I don't know if you can see that, but it does have an R. I've already done the left. So from here, we have our gasket. Line that up best you can. Sit here on top of that. Um, my screws I've still got on the magnet hack that I did, which actually did work a treat, worked perfect, hasn't lost any of its magnetism. Actually ended up baking out at 100 degrees instead of the 75 and it's still perfect. So that's gonna be awesome down the track for any more screws that I'm doing. Bloody stuffed up already. This is what I'm telling you. So, I made a little boo boo. I forgot. It suggested that you put some anti seize on these buggers. So, let me do that quickly. Now, let's go to the top. Take that off. So this baby here, um, you've got the little keyway again, you can see there, lines up with here. Pretty simple, just watch your needle as it goes in. And back on with the lid. I do have some uh, little 14mm roundels to go on top here that I'm still waiting on. I'll finish them off with a little bit of blue and white, uh, black, I think it'll look really nice. And 
Might do the manger. All right, the float. I have found it easier. Now you need to hook these on and then feed it in, but I was having a prick of a time, so I think it's actually easier to do it this way. Let's sit that in there, guide it on, and then there will be a pin. Pin will only go in one way because of this end here that's got the that has got the knurling on it so feed it through may see a dog can hear another dog and wants to have a crack Just grab some long nose pliers and just push that down home, like so. And then the float is set up nicely. From there, we throw this gasket in. <laughs> and we throw the dog out the back. The clip on and we're done. Do our idler jet. Spring down. Bit of lube. Now I counted these when I first did it to be seven turns in so I'll adjust these later but let's take it home and back it off a little bit for the minute that is all our jets I might um, do the old butterfly next so leave the ring up throw that in Put our bracket on. Now we turn it over. So this is where I made the markings. You can still see the, the scratch there. So that means that face is up this way. So if I tilt that back. Very carefully, it's a bit of a jigsaw to get this thing in. There we go. So then you need to turn this and try and center it up. Like so. And then a little bit of blue Loctite because I've taken the, um, the painting off the end of the screw there. All right, so we just make sure we got it centered. It's pretty good there. Tighten these up. Beautiful. Back over, we have. Ha, huh, idiot. I put that bloody arm on the wrong way. Okay. Let's go again. Mm. 
We are good. So next thing is the manual choke. Pretty easy to set up. Feed that back down. A little eye in here. So in the lowest position is now Once that's nipped up, you have a full choke action. And all you have to do, get a pair of side cutters, and just nip that off. Carb number two, easy as that. I have to say, I was quite worried, as I said earlier, about doing these babies. Um, I reckon anybody give it a crack it's not that hard with all the videos that are out there great advice from other guys it's actually a pretty bloody easy job that's it thanks guys